When I was seven years old, I sat in front of our black and white TV way up in our lake house in Canada, and I watched Neil Armstrong step onto the moon. How many of you did that? It was incredible. I went out at night. I was trying to see if I could see them on the moon. Well, this was our vision, our bright future in space in 1952 before any spacecraft ever flew. This is Werner von Braun's vision of the future in space with a beautiful ideas like a rotating space colony for 200 people. And gosh it, darn it, they even were thinking of how to go to Mars with all these tanker ships and whatnot. And amazing, amazing, amazing future. And uh, 1968, Stanley Kubrick made a film called 2001, The Space Odyssey. And he depicted this space station for 200 people and just a Hilton Hotel and everything. Um, 2011, this is what we built. This is what humanity built for six people. <laughs> well, good news is there's something now called new space. And you've got incredible entrepreneurs making inflatable habitats. You've got entrepreneurs making brand new low-cost rockets. And these guys are talking about how can we go to Mars? Well, why am I up here talking to you about this? This kind of odd kid that I am still. Um, well, I, since Neil Armstrong, since I saw him, I got totally enamored of space. And this is me doing a talk in my town in Canada, just out of high school. And this is me drawing asteroid miners and doing a whole series of articles in the local paper on what would be. I even designed asteroid capture missions, and I sent them to NASA. And I got these letters back like, uh, aha, uh -huh. uh, yes, yes, indeed. But, but, don't laugh, uh, 20 years later, this is me, I, I, at NASA. Thank you, thank you. Doing, I did 25 projects with our team on simulating all their missions, everything, rovers, space stations, you name it, simulated the whole thing. And in 2007, they came to me and said, Bruce, we need your help to figure out how to put people on an asteroid. And he says, you're kidding. Says, no, you've simulated everything, go, go for it. So I drew this. And it became this, a whole new direction for NASA that was controversial at the time, but it became their direction. This is my design. So, but this comes back to the question of why haven't we done more, right? Why haven't we done more? Well, it costs thousands of dollars a kilogram or pound or whatever you want to lift water and fuel and food and hamburgers and whatever into space. It's just expensive. And, you know, that space station that Sandra Kubrick showed, that would be a thousand launches. Not practical. So I was out thinking one night, and it was a summer meteor, sh meteor shower, and I saw this meteors coming in, and I thought, wait a minute. We're passing through the tail of a comet, which is made of mostly water, and the Earth is getting showered with this remnants of this tail, and I thought, what if a comet, instead of just the meteors, what if a comet got captured in the Earth-Moon system, and it was just going around and around? Well, that would be so valuable. There'd be thousands of tons of water and fuel and stuff. So I went to work on it. <laughs> so I designed this spacecraft. It would be a huge fabric structure. Go around this icy object and capture all its juices. <laughs> and it, it wasn't really practicable until I met this man, the august meteor astronomer Peter Janiskins, who knows about meteors. Initially, he said, your idea is not going to work. And then we went out for a bowl of clam chowder. And by the end of that, he said, Here's how it'll work. <laughs> and we'll introduce gas into the enclosure and it'll control the asteroid. And he rang his friend Julian Knott up, who's a, pre a preeminent balloon designer. And he and I worked for a month to design the balloon structure. And this is how it works, folks. Shepard, the wildest spacecraft in the next 50 years. Coming up to the asteroid, robotic spacecraft, we scan it with our LIDAR. We don't want to get tangled up with this thing. It might be 25 feet long and a thousand tons, much bigger than us. And there's our balloon structure closing down, closing down around it. That's my seal design made of curtain rods. <laughs> <laughs> you go in, look in the inside. We're introducing xenon gas, a tenth of an atmosphere. Why? Because the friction in the gas is going to allow us to control this thing and stop the tumbling. A thousand ton thing in three weeks. We have stopped it. It is our space potato. It is now ready for roasting. 
So now we push it. We push it with waves of gas, very, very gently, very gently, and push it and fire out back, and we can move these things all over the solar system. Why are we doing this? Well, different kinds of things are out there. We're made out of the building blocks of, of these things. Here's a comet visited by the Europeans, made mostly of water, methane, those kinds of things. Here's an iron, nickel iron object that fell on, on uh, Oregon. It's just solid nickel iron, incredible stuff. So what do we do? We go and use Shepard to encapsulate these objects. This one might be mostly ice. So we're going to fractionate, we're going to heat the interior and take the water uh, off and just boil it off and put it in our tanks. And those tanks, we can make it into rocket fuel and, and air to breathe and consumable water and then move it to where we need it. Here's our nickel iron asteroid. We can put carbon monoxide gas there and drive it through this asteroid and it will electroform on a form here and we can make big parts. This is a big 3D printer in space. Crazy stuff. This is the most crazy and beautiful of all. This is a biosphere. We can take, instead of completely uh, turn, you know, melting down our, our, our dirty snowball, we can turn it into a liquid phase, into this globule. And we can introduce plants, we can introduce fishes, we can, we can create a biosphere in space and we can use it to live in space. So here's how it would work. Here's how this radical, total game changer would work. We want to go to Mars. You know, people are talking, well, let's go to Mars, but they're talking about one-way trips. You know, I, I wouldn't want to go one-way trip anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we take Shepard and we go out to the outer solar system to what's called the snow line, where you get icy objects. And we grab one. And as we, we get it in our closure, we move it to the orbit of Mars and we process all its materials. It might be thousands of tons. And then the human crew can leave, leave from Earth and they arrive at Mars, and guess what? They have a tanker block ready, filled, ready to go, just like your CO2 canister you take to the hardware store. So it goes onto the ship. Now they have return fuel. They can go home, but, which is a good thing. <laughs> and they also have fuel to take their lander all over Mars. This is a totally new way to go to Mars. <laughs> it works. And remember that wonderful big rotating space station? We can build one. <laughs> this is just like Werner von Braun's vision, except now we're making the parts in space with, with a Shepard miner. And we're feeding the crew in space so they get their hamburgers. <laughs> a sustainable way to stay in space. Hello. <laughs> so I would say to my young self uh, back in the high school days, and for young people in the audience, you can have a dream and just keep working on it, and it can come true. Here's me back when I was 19. Here's uh, Werner von Braun's little vision. Notice the tankers. He's asking, can we get to Mars? I would say to you, we can go to Mars. <laughs> so, a special little announcement. The three co-inventors, the radical collaborators on this idea, we applied for NASA funding. I've done so many NASA grants. We kind of thought we would not get approved. This is last year. They didn't pick us. They had, they had good written all over the proposal. I think it kind of stumped them in a way because it's so new. It's a crazy idea. So we met and we decided, let's just open source this thing. We'll give this away to humanity. Nobody can license or patent this now, now that it's being presented here on this stage. We give it away to the entrepreneurs, anybody who wants it, and we can move our civilization, take the pressure off Earth, we can move our civilization into the solar system. So that's my radical idea worth sharing. Thank you.